morning. Welcome to the unit. I don't know what we can actually do. We don't own any of this stuff, do we? I can show any of this. Right. right. So recently, we went touring around Europe in a tent. Now, it was great, but we had to set a tent up at every single campsite. And we had to stay on campsites, which costs a lot of money. So I thought I'd spend a lot more money in buying a bus. I call it a bus. Some people might have complaints about that because it's technically a mini bus, but you know. I don't know much about cars at all, really. But it seems like a really small bonnet. Does that? That's sort of the point. No, do you know what I mean? Like, does the engine sit differently? Should we actually pop the hood? There's a lever somewhere, hold on. I saw you do it yesterday. Is this it? No. Oh, there is a. Can we automate this? Yeah, this I hate. Can we? Right. I feel like it's going to be all very cut up this video because I'm still getting used to being filmed on camera. I know I used to film all the people on camera and tell them how to act, but it's a bit different. I understand when <laughs> it's hard when you actually be honest. You're on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's chilling. I'm like. So this is the engine. I'm not too sure what. Is this coolant? I think so. This doesn't look very, very, very good. We'll just come, come close. Is that, is that kosher? Uh, wipers. Don't know what this is. We'll work it out. We've got car experts on hand if we need to, aka this, the one behind the camera. But what is this? It's a big vent. Imagine if you just revved it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Some sort of fuse for something. Not too sure. The battery is massive, look at that. This is where the battery is. There's a lot of talk about how much weight you put into these because once you've got the solar panels on the roof and you've fitted it out, they can weigh quite a bit. And one way of doing that is to spend a bit more money and replace all the batteries with lithium batteries. They not only perform better because you can drain them lower than this one, but uh, they are lighter. So I think it's good call. There's a few things on this bus I am not too keen on and it it's not structural as far as I'm aware. I've looked around it, there's not a lot of rust. I think the cameraman can agree. Yeah, there's not much. Um, the only issue is one of them. This light is beautiful. It looks like it's been replaced pretty recently but this one seems to have got this frosting cover over it. Um, I've been told this can be, is it sanded out or something? like polished out. I guess so, yeah. Um, I'm not too sure on that, but I want to get these cleaned up. I'm kind of debating putting steps underneath here. This is a, this is a massive step. Now, I don't know if you can tell when I put them in here, my knee finishes where this is, right? These windows are great. Now, a lot of people say when you buy a van, you should buy one without windows because they are huge holes basically in the side of your van and uh, they can let a lot of cold and heat in but we're going to protect them with a, a film on the inside which will turn them into like a kind of a mirror on the outside so it will reflect all the heat but keep the heat in and we can see out but they can't see in unless it's night time and you have a light on there's no way around that I haven't, I haven't worked around that yet but 
I will do. Uh, the windows we're not going to use will block up. We won't use the full windows in all of it, but I kind of want to keep a 360 vision. There's a scratch on this window, and I don't know if we can get it out. If you know how to get this scratch out, it would be ideal if you could let us know, because this also frustrates me. And I don't want to replace the whole window because, <laughs> because there's a little scratch on it, but I'm coming close to it. So on many buses, there are different styles of doors. So when I was doing the research, a lot of them had sliding doors, which would open to about here. Um, so you'd lose all of this space. And, and some vans utilize it by having the countertop come this way. But honestly, from being in a camper van, I just wanted like a normal type door. Now, issues with this door, which I didn't know until I purchased it, was it's meant to be automatic. But I pulled a lever yesterday up here. Because, you know, what? anything red, push or pull. And it broke the door. The door can no longer work on a motor down here. I've taken the box apart to try and see if I could fix it. When you close it, it's meant to pull up, but it it doesn't. So I think it's dropped down somehow and I can't get it back up. I could be wrong. Cup holders, a very controversial subject in many vehicles. This one, they sit behind this lovely little kind of drawer, cupboard, drawer is it? Uh, I don't know, that's what makes it magical. So whatever it is, I like it and I can't wait to have a McDonald's milkshake. We're not sponsored by McDonald's, I'm joking. I hate it when people say that. Like, of course, you're not f***ing sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> Oops. That wasn't me. I laid. <laughs> right. We believe this section here to be the diesel heater control panel. Now, this will be removed from here, and I'll probably put the solar controller here to make us sure we know that the solar panels are down on the roof because it's right next to the key. So when you put the key in the ignition, it should light up and you'll know straight away. There's a chance if I put it over here, you know, you'll be messing with the radio and not even notice it. So that's where I'm going to put it. <coughs> oh, very high up. So I do, don't drive vehicles. <laughs> Very funny because I bought a bus, but I haven't driven a car since I passed a decade ago. <laughs> uh, the one behind the camera, Alid, he reversed it in and basically parked it through the narrow gap that uh, we got told to reverse it through. Uh, overall, I have been in a lot of vehicles, even though I wasn't the driver but I can safely say I feel like this is quite a good position for driving. I don't know if it's different from any other vehicles. It's actually the first time I've started it, actually. Hang on. Sure. Is it that, that one? The brake. That oh, is the brake, yeah. This one? Yes. <laughs> good, good. Right, put it on for Is a neutral, yeah. I was going to buy an ambulance and convert an ambulance, but I couldn't bring my conscience to buy an ambulance because people die in ambulances. And although I don't believe in religion or ghosts, it's best not to tempt fate. So this is why I got this one. Unfortunately, it does feel like it's got a ghost inside it. It doesn't help with the silhouette of the children at the back, really. It's kind of, what is that film? Is it shining or something? It has a light button. I'll just put there power on. This controls the lights that are in the back, so it can go onto blue LEDs or it can go onto just straight on. They're kind of cool, but they're a bit dim. This one is for the extractor fan at the back, which is very ideal. I didn't think it came with an extractor fan because everyone takes a photo under the extractor fan, so you never see it. You know, like when they try and sell it. <laughs> so I never... Try and hide it. Yeah. 
so it is a bit of an ugly thing, but it's it looks like it's quite narrow, the, the, the space. I can stand up straight and I don't touch the roof. It, it's one of the reasons why we're going to drop the floor. The floor, if I can show you, we took off the plating at the back here, so it does look a bit rusty, but it's nothing to be concerned about. Just, yeah, that's not advisable. Get my shoes out of that, yeah. So we can drop the floor down a good few inches, which will give us plenty of headroom. <laughs> it's, it's a hell of a hat. Jesus. <laughs> Another issue is this roof light. As beautiful as, well, let's not use beautiful. As like decent as it looks, it has a few faults. One of them is, well, it's not this side. You don't have to come around here. This roof light is broken. <laughs> but it, it's not, not, a, <laughs> not a hassle to me. We're going to take this out anyway, so uh, when we take down the roof and scrap it, we'll take this out, measure the size of what this is, and then replace it with a proper one uh, for camper vans that have the fly nets and, and stuff like that, maybe even an extractor fan. It would be ideal maybe if we could split it in half and have an extractor fan on the kitchen side and like a light view one that we can just pop up in this side. I have no idea if that exists. There's a diesel heater. <laughs> It's bloody freezing in here, so we did try and turn it on and then realised we were in a garage and we were giving ourselves carbon monoxide poisoning. Please. That doesn't actually happen with diesels, but it's sort of the case. We were, we were basically poisoning ourselves because we put the diesel heater on and we can't find the exhaust for it to pipe it out of the unit. <laughs> Therefore, it's no longer on. There's chairs at the front, we're going to remove them and put spinny chairs in. This is going to come out. So coming up the steps then, I've completely changed the plan, honestly. I was like, why don't we just take the chairs out and go from this way because there might not even be a metal plate like at the back. So we're now going to reverse what we were doing. Take these seats out and we can put them further down here so we can use them as seats anyway. It will also give us access to the front without us having to get out and back in. And then we can start working from the front to the back instead of the back to the front. last saw us we uh, thought that it would be easy for us to come this way in to take the floor up but we learned that was not the case this plywood does not feel like plywood anymore it, it's kind of like metal <laughs> it's just it's impossible to take up uh, so we left that end because there was no gap there's a metal piece underneath and we couldn't get the leverage to open it up when we tried to take out here um, if you look down there by the step, you can see it on the camera. Yeah, just about. <laughs> when we try to take down by the step, it's just a whole metal thing. So we're going to have to take that step down when we've taken the floor up. So that was a no go. So then we decided, right, we're going to come into the center of the bus. And that's where this hole comes in. Now, if I put my bottle of coke to demonstrate, that is how much floor we have to be able to lower it down by when we lower it down, being the key factor of when will be probably tomorrow now because we don't have the tools to just rip it up. There's a metal subframe that runs throughout the whole thing underneath that stops you from drilling through in certain parts. So our next goal is to get something to cut the plywood 
all the way down there, all the way down there, and then take that piece out and then we can better assess the situation to get it up. And hopefully while we're cutting that out, it should give it a bit more play to take the rest out and maybe cut the bolts holding down these. Thank you for watching this week's episode of, I don't know yet. Um, if you enjoyed it, please, please, please like, subscribe and all that jazz. And also, if you have any questions on this, please comment below and we'll try and answer them in future videos because at the moment I have no clue if you're interested or not. Um, thank you.